beautiful day today. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is John with SoCal Outdoor Adventure. Today's episode, we are actually up in Northern California, just below the Sierras, as a matter of fact. I am actually on my way uh, back home from Reno, Nevada. Uh, what happened was is that um, my nephew graduated from high school this past weekend. Me and my family went out to go see his high school graduation. And my fiance and my daughter wanted to go see their her uncle, my fiance's uncle, because he's been asking for them for quite some time. So I took him out to Reno and I dropped him off. And now I am here at this uh, campground along the 395 called Chris Flat Campground. And it's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful day today. Got clear skies, the sun is bright, there's a bit of a breeze, nothing major. Um, in a little while, I'll give you guys a grand tour of the campsite. Uh, today we're out here just for an overnight here, and we're going to be testing out some new gear, some new pieces of equipment that I have, as well as a new sleep system that I'm testing out here as well. I'm also going to be doing some fishing today too. so. Stick around and enjoy the ride. see if I can find myself a um, nice flat stable piece of ground here so I can set the tent up. Um, one thing I did actually forget to bring with me was a ground tarp. So i um, pretty determined myself about that. Um, I thought about doing it here but then of course I've got these two massive pine trees right above my head. So my biggest concern right now is whether or not if I'm, I'm going to have any wind there is a breeze blowing, but it's not heavy, it's, it's not super duty. And um, so I'm thinking I'm, what I might go ahead and do is, I'm going to change the camera angle down a little bit here, so you guys can see what I'm thinking. There's a spot right down here on this part that seems to be nice and flat. So I think what I'll go ahead and do is set up the tent in this section right here. That will be a good place for me to sleep and camp picnic tables right above I'll show you more of that later so I'm gonna set the tin up that one down here and then that'll be a lot better I was originally gonna do a hammock camp tonight but I changed my mind actually about doing a hammock camp although I wouldn't mind doing it um, the problem I have with this with this particular campground is that I'm look I've looked at all the campsites that are here and the, the tree these pine trees are uh, very well close together so I could set up a hammock camp if I wanted to it's possible but looking at what I have and what I have available and what resources I think especially since I'm only going to be here for one night I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the tent I think that'll be a lot better and a lot easier hopefully you guys can uh, see me here so yeah let's go ahead and uh, Let's move the camera down there, we'll get the tent set up.
ain't gonna work. One of the problems I ran in, I ran into in this particular spot is that this spot has a lot of very small rocks, and the reason why I was trying to use uh, this guy, it's a poncho that I had in a small little protective kit that I was going to use to help keep protect my tent. Um, but the problem that I have with this particular system is that um, the poncho is not big enough to support the tent. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, I've got a, um, I'm going to move the tent out of the way, put it to the side. I've got a huge blanket that I can throw down here as a ground cover for right now. You know, it's only for one night, so I think that'll do just fine. This is the REI Co-op. This is the Passage 2. Um, this is my third time using this tent. And I have to say that I am very impressed with how rugged it's built and how amazing it is. It's got a bathtub floor built in. I don't have the rain fly put up yet. I'll show you that. I'll put the rain fly up and then you guys will get to see exactly how it looks without the, with the rain fly on. Um, Passage 2 is very well designed. You can fit two people in there easily. Of course for me and my gear, definitely not a problem whatsoever. There's a couple of storage bins on the. There's a couple of pockets on the inside, as well as up toward the top, which is fantastic, which is phenomenal, and it's very comfortable and very roomy. Um, as you can see, I mentioned this earlier that the ground I'm sleeping on tonight is a little bit rock. Is a little bit rocky, so I've got this uh, blanket sitting underneath the tent for tonight. Special sense is only for one night, and plus, so this is a blanket that stays in my truck as. Um, Kind of like a sitting blanket if I need it to be. But all in all, it's very well, this tent is very well maintained. So, um, let's take you on a tour of the inside. Oh man, am I comfortable right now? Oh, I'm still sleeping on an air mat though. <laughs> but I am very comfortable right now, guys. Um, so yeah, so on the inside of the tent, you got these two top pockets, you got these pockets right here on the top here which allows you to put your cell phone and other stuff up there you've also got uh, the two smaller pockets up here which is also a very nice feature so door stuff pockets here another pocket on the side and then there's two pockets here one here one here and the the, the, the tent itself is um, is seam stitched all the way around so Plenty of water resistant. Um, anytime you guys are going to go camping, always make sure that you bring a ground cloth. Of course, I forgot, so my bad. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to go and get the rest of my camp furniture set up here and then let's get down to the river and do some fishing. I want to test something, I want to test my luck. So tonight, besides, so tonight besides being an overnight adventure here, um, this is also test night as well for me because I get to test out um, a couple of new pieces of gear. Now, normally when I come out here, you guys normally see me carry my OKC Bushcrafter. Well, I decided to go ahead and use a different knife this time. This time I have the, the Mora Garberg. This is a full tang knife. It's got a very nice 90 degree spine. Definitely looking forward to testing this out today as well. Decent, uh, pretty good. Plastic sheet, the knife stays in there pretty well. And I've also got the leather strap as well, as well as the belt loop. Of course, the belt loop does tend to come out, but in ways though, I mean, that's kind of a good thing because then what I can do when I get inside the tent is I can pull the knife out put it in one of the side pouches and then when I need it just put my pants back on and throw that back on there. No problem. Oh yes, we've got the behemoth 
the storm proof sweet fire starters we're going to test this today in the um in my little in my stove i brought my um 180 tax stove to cook some dinner in tonight XL pillow my climate This is my cleaning kit, but this is going to go back in the truck. This is my dry bag. This has all of my, this is by Ever. This is by um, Sea to Summit. This has got all my some spare clothes for tomorrow morning in there. Got my hammock system in this Sea to Summit bag, which I'll do. Static care mat by Climat. Love this thing. Works very well. Got another pillow, feel the stream, just in case. Uh, your sleeping bag. This is the uh, the snug pack jungle bag. First time using it. I'm not gonna give a review on this one until I test it out and then I'll give my review on it. Also got my hammock quilt from Snug Pack. Extra blanket in case I'm in tonight. Not exactly sure what the temperature is going to be, so it's good to have it just in case I need a backup. I should be pretty warm in that snug pack. And of course, if I were sleeping in my in the hammock tonight, I've got my uh, one tigress under quilt. That is set up with my jungle and my jungle hammock system. Now, logic now in reality, if I was sleeping in the hammock though, obviously I have a set up right here. And I've also got my underquilt, climate air mat, and of course the jungle the either the jungle bag or the mosquito or the hammock quilt. Um, the hammock quilt, it's great because I don't have to worry about having to zip it up or anything when I, once I get to the hammock. The jungle bag does have a uh, mosquito net built into the system. So if I was sleeping in a cowboy cabin, I would use this, the mosquito net definitely. But if I, Or if I had an open hammock, I would use the mosquito net. So that's very cool. Definitely looking forward to that. But for tonight, since we're not, since we're using the tent, let's go ahead and put... Under quilt as well as the hammock system back in the bag in my our uh, bushcrafter. In case you guys are wondering um, what this is, this is by um, God. What was the company? I'll have to think about. I'll have to think about it and come back to it. Say this is my fishing kit. All right, so let's get everything set up. Let's go ahead and get the rest of inside of my tent set up with my air mat, and my bag, and everything else. And uh, we'll see you guys back later. So right now we've got the rain fly attached to the tent. There's a pair. Orange paracord along the edge, along the edge of the doors here, the back of the tent here, that allows for um, plenty of plenty of tie-down points if hit the windward to get really bad. 
The uh, tent does come with some extra paracord as well to tie it down just in case. You got your door right here, which I'm going to stick out in a few moments. There are also uh, two ventilation ports. There was one on one side, and then this one right here on the top. And there's also another door right here on the side. Very cool tent. Camp's all set up, ready for the night. The only thing I got left to do is I got to chop up some firewood for my dinner. Um, you know what, one of the things I am taking into great consideration right now is adding a um, utility belt for when I'm camping. I've got, a, well, I don't necessarily have a lot of gear, but well, I do have a lot of gear. <laughs> but for things like this, especially if I'm going to go fishing and all that stuff, I've got a good amount of stuff on my belt already as it is. I mean, I've got my cell phone and my knife, and now I've got my my other pet, my um, fishing kit with me. Oh, by the way, uh, the name of the bag that is on my fi where my fishing kit is actually inputted in is the Condor, is a Condor utility pouch. I'm going to do a review on this thing. This is the first day I've ever tested it, so I'm definitely going to do a review on it. Um, but as far as my fishing kit is concerned. I'm going to test it out first, see how well it works, and then I'll give a full-on review on that one later on down the line. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a very beautiful night. It is. The wind's blowing a little bit. It's starting to get a little cool down. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, grab my fishing pole and um, head down to the river. See if I can test my look. Just got back from fishing. I broke the reel. I can believe that. I was pulling on it too lightly, too actually too hard. It got stuck in a bush, and I was forcing it. I actually broke the wheel, the reel. I'm really not happy with myself right now. But. Bad day of fishing is better than a bad day at work, I guess. I don't know. Oh well. After I, after that happened, I had thought about packing up and going home, but don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna get stuff ready for dinner and get some food made. Some of these pizzas have got some really bad knots. Really gnarly. Oh, great. A lot of you guys are thinking, okay, why are you banging on a piece of rock? Well, you notice that um, I'm not trying to hit too hard, except if I'm using the hatchet. I'm just trying to hit it hard enough to where I can still have a good balance and maintain control. 
Now, uh, these pieces right here are going to be for my my stove, my 180 tax stove. This is actually what I'm going to use to make my fire. Now I am going to have a fire in the pit. Obviously if you saw at the beginning of the video you may notice the fire in the pit. So I am going to have a fire in the pit. This knife though, or a Garberg, it's cutting through the wood like, like butter. Very nice curls. Very nice. I love this thing. Now the only thing that um, I have a bit of a problem with is that when I pull the knife out of the sheath system, it take it pulls it actually pulls out the whole um, the whole loop unless I hold it with my hand. But that's okay, I mean, I'd rather have the extra security in keeping the knife attached to my belt versus walking around one day maybe losing this thing. I'll tell you one thing now. If my fiance makes another trip up to Reno again, I might take a couple of extra days and I um, think what I'll do is I'll bring Krista up and do another overnight here again, another overnighter here again. I definitely want to try my luck again at fishing. I had almost caught a fish and then the damn handle of the reel broke on me. And that's what makes me mad even more is that the reel broke. Anyway, I'm going to chop off a few more pieces of wood here, and then I'll get a fire going. Before I do, though, you know, it's 523. It's getting late. I was going to take you guys around the campground, but I think, but I, think I might do that tomorrow when I head out. So I think we'll do it that way. Got a fire going right now with uh, medium infernos, and I have to say, I'm very impressed. Turn in about two good, good sticks of fat wood.
put some chips in there. And then while that's warming up, I'll go ahead and get my meat, cook some meat. Well, we got a bit of a small problem here. Um, the meat that I bought is frozen stiff. And the reason why is because I stuck it in my, in the refrigerator. The hotel that we stayed at last night has a, has a refrigerator in it. So, yeah, I needed to say, I've got, um, gotta wait till the meat kind of falls out a little bit. However, on the bright side though, I'm gonna go ahead and warm up some beans. Got some Bush's grilling beans, bourbon and brown sugar. Part of my dinner tonight. The mini inferno is actually still burning pretty well here. I think what I'll go ahead and do when I get ready to have my primary fire is I'll use the mini inferno. The the big the uh the, um not the mini inferno. Oh my gosh, it's the monster inferno by Yuko. Um, two people recommend the product. Um, Chris Tanner. And of course, um, Chris Tanner, Ben Lipitsky from Living Survival, Chris Tanner from, from Prepare My 101, and Luke and Susan from the Outdoor Gear Review. They, rec they highly recommend the product. And um, truth be told, they are 100% right. This product's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open this can, grab my pot, start cooking for up some beans. Using a key titanium pot here to cook the beans in. Story starting to warm up if you can believe that. Gotta say, key titanium works very, very well.
Now in case you guys are wondering, I do have gloves with me in case it gets too hot. Mm. You can taste the bourbon. So I'm going to go and get the first half of my real meal right here. Bring it back, guys, back in a minute. I know what you guys are thinking. Where's this guy eating baked beans right now? He has cooked his meat yet, and he's also got a bottle of um, Coca Cola. Well, this is a camping adventure, not really a bushcraft adventure. Hey, beans is always good. Sun's starting to go down now. It's getting cooler. So it'll be interesting to see how I sleep tonight. Mm. I'll tell you one thing, if you're not a fan of baked beans whatsoever, get some. They're good. These green beans, just perfect. All right. I think it's about the time I get the frying pan on there, get it warmed up, throw in a little bit of olive oil and some special spices, and we'll start cooking the meat. and hot. Throw in a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to go and throw in some seasoning. This is Camp, this is Mountain Standard Cap Masters. Found this stuff over at REI. Um, throw a little bit of that in there. Mm.
going to cook up pretty good. Now, here's a friendly tip for you guys. Um, if you're out camping and you're worried about how to clean your tools, including your knife or your frying pan or whatever, how to drop the, the excess, well, here's a simple tip for you. As you can see, the knife blade and the handle is completely clean. I did get a little bit of stuff on it. What I've actually got with me here is just an old piece of t-shirt. Got an old white t-shirt that I used that I used to wear for work underneath my regular clothes. And um, beauty about this is that once the once I'm done with it, I'm not gonna save it obviously, but once I'm done I can just throw in a trash can. Old t-shirt comes in handy. Got another new saw here that I'm going to be working with too tonight. Possibly part tomorrow morning as well. I want to introduce you guys to the um, Silky F18075. Definitely looking forward to using this. And I expect a review to come out on um, later on on this on this particular tool. Any luck? Huh? I tried to, but my reel, my handle, my reel broke. I got it stuck in a damn rock, and I couldn't get it loose, and it broke it. I had one early. I had one when I was down there just a few months, like earlier this afternoon. After I got here, I had one down there, and he got away from me. Now I was using just I was using a regular. Um, which one did I have? Oh, from Lone Pine?
talking to a guy who was walking over there. He, was, he had a military type hack. I guess he uses that for fishing. It's pretty cool. You know, I thought about using a small pack like that for when I come out camping and I go fishing or anything like that, but it's not worth it. So I think my next mission is going to be for my bushcraft kit or even my fishing kit for, for that matter. Well, fishing kit, I have, I have another kit that I use for fishing. I'll show you guys that another time. But I think my next mission is going to be creating a... Um, a utility belt system a utility a belt kit I'm gonna finish cooking and get ready to eat because I'm starving Spice gives me just right amount of food. Hmm. Hmm. Mess around with my with my saw, but I think I'll do it. I think I'll do another night. I think I'm, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow morning with my breakfast. Hmm. Hmm. And the wash fall down. Foster's big cam. I haven't had one of these in a while. Good beer. Mm. So I'm gonna go and enjoy my dinner. Bring you guys back when I get the big fire and I get ready for the fire for the main fire. Mm. This is delicious. Shoot a bit. It's running like a pig right now. Good news is though, is um, I've got me some firewood chopped up for my fire, my stove. Uh, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do when I get back. You guys have seen me use the uh, fiber fox stove a lot of times. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go back to the firebox. Now, the thing I do want to talk about is, uh, is um, these um, these Yuko Bohemian Sweet Fires. These things are phenomenal, as you saw me use earlier with my 
with my other stove, with my with my 1A tax stove, and these things are are very fa are fantastic. I would highly recommend these. They're about I don't know six or seven bucks I think for a three pack of these things, but they are dynamite. I also bought a box of the miniature turtles, which I have not had a chance to test yet, but I am going to be testing it soon. So we're going to go ahead and get these uh, pine cones lit. This is my fire starter. And then we're going to get some wood on the fire, have a nice fire. A little strike on that guy and this thing goes up. Look at that. Go ahead and let those pine cones get lit. It'll be a nice fire. I've got one inferno left, which is good for the stove for tomorrow morning. Oh no. Today was a wonderful day. We got a good start off this morning. Took my fiance to her to her grandma's as well as my daughter. Came out here to do some camping and some fishing. Although my reel broke, it is still a very, very beautiful day today for a camp out. I'm very happy I came. Very happy. No regrets on this trip. Got a little bit of phosphorus left. I'm going to keep drinking and enjoying that. And I'm going to grab my spare pillow. I'm going to use that as a seat. I have to say, those Bohemith, Bohemist Infernos, man, those things are awesome. Is that going to prevent me from using my other tools that I have, such as my fire steel, or my other tenders that I use, like, like for example, um, like the wet fire tender, I've also got some fire ropes and some fat wood, the answer is no it's not going to stop me from using any of that but the good thing is a wise man once told me that you it's always good to have backups of certain things in order for you to stay alive I've got plenty of that So I'm going to relax and enjoy the fire and then I will see you guys all, I will see you all in the morning. Good morning everybody. Um, it's a little, uh, it's, a, it's about 5 minutes till 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I did not have a good sleep at all last night. Um, I slept decent for the first few hours. For the first maybe two hours and then it got and it just got really really cold um i'm wearing a thermal shirt and thermal pants underneath my underneath my pajamas and it just got really bad last night so oops piece of my f firewood here fell get that back in there again uh 
stove ready for breakfast this morning. Um, so yeah, it got really it got really cold last night. Even with the combination of both my um, snug pack sleeping bag as well as the under as well as the hammock quilt, um, I could not get I could not stay warm. I was free. I was literally freezing. It was very cold last night. Um, so, is that going to deter me away from the snug pack um, hammock, the quilt system? The answer is no. I don't think it. I don't think it will. To be honest with you, um, I'm going to go ahead and start getting some breakfast made here. Obviously, you guys see me do this a couple of hundred times. I'm not going to show you the video on this one. <laughs> I'm going to be making some uh, bacon and eggs this morning. But yeah, I'm just finally starting to warm up. Had a nice cup of coffee brewing on my on my um, Pocket Rocket 2 with my coffee, my 1.5 liter coffee pot from um, the uh, Pathfinder School. Absolutely love this thing. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting uh, finishing up my coffee, and I'm gonna go ahead and start probably making some tea as well to help me out here. Want to make sure that I don't get like a like a stuffy nose or anything like that. I don't. I don't really want to get sick. So. Check back with you guys later. Bacon's coming out pretty good. It was um so yeah as I mentioned last night it was got to be very cold last night. Very hard to sleep. But there were so many stars last night I was in so much awe. Definitely going to have to rework up the setup, but I also believe that I came at the beginning of June, which in my opinion may have been a bad idea because um, I took some pictures and there's some snow still up in the Sierras, so I'm thinking that may have something to do with it. Maybe. I don't know. Still, very beautiful night. Kind of wish I could have slept in the tent more, but I was too cold. I had to go, I had to sleep in my truck. So yeah, let's get breakfast done. Thought I'd give you guys an idea of what I'm having this morning. There's a lot of traffic coming through here this morning. There was also a lot of traffic going through here last night, a lot of 18 wheelers. So we got eggs, bacon. I already had my cup morning coffee because it was so cold. So I'm going to enjoy my breakfast, and then we'll start packing up. Alright guys, it is very cold. It's very cold this morning, especially when you're in the middle of this canyon. So, what are my takeaways from this trip? Well, first takeaway definitely is going to be the fact that it was always to be too cold at night. So, um, I think one of the things that really made it more colder than usual was the fact that the winds were blowing. It wasn't a it wasn't a hard wind, but it was a light wind. But at the same time, to the south of my to the south of where I am, actually on the Sierras, you can still see. Uh, snow on top of the mountain, so I think that kind of projected with the coldness um, Second thing is my sleep system could have been better. I think for this type of trip I would have needed a Much more better sleeping pad and sleeping bag to keep me warm for the night Otherwise, I would have been able to sleep in a tent instead of sleeping in my truck last night I didn't have I didn't really have a choice. It got too cold in the tent So I had to go sleep in the truck last night, but it worked out um, let's see what else we got here. 
I'm going to be making another change. I'm also going to be changing out. I'm going to be changing out the the uh, stove. You guys saw me use the 180 tack stove, which I love very much. But uh, one of the things that I always carry in my haversack is a um, um, is an alcohol stove as a backup. So I think what I might go ahead and go ahead and do in this situation is switch back over to the um, to my other favorite stove, the Firebox stove. That stove does very well. And for trips like these, where I'm just only out here for one night or maybe a couple of nights, that little stove really does a great job with when it comes to stuff like that. Now, uh, what else? Um, obviously, you know the story about my fishing, my fishing reel. My fishing reel broke, but the rod is still in pretty good shape. So I'm definitely going to be um, getting myself a new reel. So. I'm gonna go ahead and um, that's pretty much all. That's pretty much it for right now. Um, if there's other stuff I need to take into consideration, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, the Bohemoth Sweet Fire Tenders worked fantastic. I used all three of them. I used two last night. One in one in obviously in the 180 tack stove. Another one to get the fire going last night to enjoy, and phenomenal. And I also used another one this morning to help me get my stove going to get make breakfast this morning. And it was just phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love it. So, um, you know, definitely see a review on that later on down the line. And we'll talk more about that in another video. Um, so for right now, that's pretty much it. We'll give you guys my final thoughts as we head out of here. So that way I can give you guys a tour of the campground. Um, so we'll see you soon. All right, y'all, it's time for the tour. Here we go. Now, in case you're wondering, we're inside my vehicle. I've got a 2008 GMC Canyon. Absolutely love this truck. Uh, my, my father and I traded places. Traded vehicles. I had a Toyota Camry, but had some issues and Dan and I decided to go ahead and switch vehicles because I would use the truck more. But anyway, this is it. Um, this is so. This is the other side of the uh, Chris Flat Campground. There was another group. There was another camper that camped out last night. Hopefully, they had a better night's sleep than I did. There's a grand total of 15 sites, um, 15 campsites here, which is pretty nice. And it looks like a couple of people came in last night. That's my guess. A couple of folks here got some fishing poles. Camp poles is right there in front of me. There's another guy that's camping out right there. Throwing a nice warm fire. Sun's starting to hit. There's another parking lot right there. Two of the sites that we're actually driving past right now on this side of the campground has got um, I know trees whatsoever, so there's uh, no shade. Evidently, these are pine trees, in case you're wondering. And um, the pine trees that I had around my campsite, where I camped at, they were, they had a bunch of, um, bunch of pine resin. I was messing around with it this morning I decided to take the pine resin for a test drive to see if it'll work the resin was dry very very dry as a matter of fact so 
so yeah overall I think my experience with um, this this particular cram can was I want to say decent not the best because of well for one very cold last night I had a hard time sleeping as I mentioned I had a go sleep in the truck lucky for me I had an emergency blanket so that did keep me warm last night in the truck thank God um, definitely wouldn't recommend well no actually let's check that I would recommend the hammock quilt but I think the hammock quilt and it's very comfortable from snug pack for this kind of for this cold weather though I don't think I don't think I would use it again in this cold weather so there's a couple of things that I definitely got to take into consideration as far as the quilt is concerned we'll talk more about that later on as I go through my um, camping system there are three porta pot there are three um, pit 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 poopers not really a lot also too um, this campground does not have any um, electric hookups so if you have a trailer or a motorhome there we go want to get my there we go want to get my hand out of there if you have a tent or a trailer I definitely would not recommend bringing that down here that is for sure but all in all though I like it it's a nice little campground to stop at if you're going on 395 if you're either going back to Southern California or if you're going north into Reno so I definitely would recommend this place I want to thank you all very much for joining me on this little event on this little overnight adventure don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I'll answer them as, and I'll answer them as diligently as I can. But again, thank you very much for joining me. Wish you all the best. This is John with SoCal Outdoor Adventure signing off. Now get outside, go have an adventure. Bye.